All right, let's say that you can run six miles per hour and you can swim three miles per hour. You are located on the shore four miles east of an island that is one mile north of the shoreline. How far should you run west to minimize the time needed to reach the island? So here's the beautiful picture here. Here's our happy little island. And you are located right here on the shoreline, a distance of four miles to the east of the island along the shore. And this island is one mile offshore. Now what you're going to do to get to this island, instead of swimming straight across, because you're a slower swimmer than a runner, you are going to run down the shoreline at 6 miles per hour, and at some point you're going to decide to hop in the water and swim across to that island. The question is, how far should you run before you hop into the water and start swimming? I think this is a pretty interesting question. So you need to find out how far you need to run down the shore. So let's define that. Let's define that as x. If the distance that you run down the shore is x, then this little distance here is going to be 4 miles minus the x miles that you ran. And we are going to find the distance that you have to swim. That'll be our first step. Notice that we have a right triangle here. And Pythagoras says that 1 squared plus 4 minus x squared equals d squared. If I FOIL and combine like terms and take a square root of both sides, I'm getting that this d is the square root of whatever this x was squared minus 8x plus 17. Okay, but we need to to minimize the amount of time that it takes for you to run down the shoreline and swim over to the island. Recall that distance equals rate times time, or time equals distance over rate. And we need to split this problem up into two times, I think. Um, one amount of time, say t1, is going to be how long it takes you to run down the shoreline. Well, the distance that you run is x, and the rate at which you run is 6 miles per hour. So the amount of time it's going to take you to run down the shoreline is whatever the distance you run is divided by 6. The swimming time I'll call t2, and that's going to be whatever distance you have to swim divided by 3. Well, we just found that the distance you have to swim is this messy looking thing divided by 3. So the total amount of time that it's going to take you to get to the island is this amount plus this amount. I'm going to call that just f of x. Now we can come up with some endpoints for this function. The smallest value of x that we could possibly choose would be to not run at all and just swim all the way to the island. That would be an x value of 0. The other option that would make sense here for minimizing our time would be to run all the way down the shore 4 miles and then swim straight across to try to minimize your swimming distance. That would represent running 4 miles, or an x value of 4. Running any more than 4 miles just doesn't make any sense. So let's take a derivative of this function that we found, and let's find its critical point. If it helps, you can write x over 6 as 1 6 x, and you can write this 3 in the denominator as a 1 3rd, and you can write the square root as a 1 half power. Now let's take a derivative. Multiplying the 1 half out in front by the 1 third is going to give us a 1 6. That power is going to reduce from 1 half to negative 1 half. And the chain rule says we have to multiply by the derivative of the function that was inside here. And we can simplify that just a little bit by factoring a 2 out of this piece right here, canceling it with the 6. That's going to give us a 1 third. And that's just going to make this an x minus 4. Well, okay, I guess we just need to set this equal to 0 and solve for x. I'll bring the 1 6 to the other side, and I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the 3. I'm also going to take this whole term and move it down to the denominator because it has a ne negative power. And I'm going to take this term from the denominator now and multiply it to the other side. Okay, again, we have a square root in this problem, and x values inside that square root. Really, the only way to solve for x here is going to be to square both sides. If I square the left side, I'm just going to get x minus 4 squared, which I will FOIL here in a second. If I square the right, I square this negative 1 half, and it becomes positive 1 fourth. And if we square this square root, we just are left with what was inside the square root. Okay, algebra. And I can't say I'm a huge fan of these fractions here, so if you don't mind, I'm just going to multiply both sides of the equation by 4 and get rid of those fractions. Okay, we have a quadratic. Let's move everything to one side. Well, to solve this equation, we're just going to have to use the quadratic formula. And when we do this and we plug this into a calculator, we're going to get two answers, about 3.4226 and about 4.5774. Now the critical point that makes sense here is the one that's about 3.2, sorry 3.4, because that value falls between 
zero and four on our interval that we decided made sense early on. So what we just determined is that we are using this as our critical point. And while I would assume that this would give us the minimum amount of time that it takes to get to the island, we should technically test the endpoints as well to make sure that it wouldn't take less time uh, at one of our endpoints. So what we really wanna do Again, if I can squeeze this in somewhere, we need to find f of 0, f of 3.4226, and f of 4 for the function that we came up with there. Now, plugging in x equals 0 into our original function would give us 0 plus the square root of 17 divided by 3, which is approximately 1.37, and that's going to be hours. I plug 3.4226 into this original function here for x, and my calculator gave me that that was approximately 0.96 hours. So good, it took a little bit less time there. And what if x equals 4? What if we ran all the way down the shore? Plugging that into our original function would give us 4 sixth plus of the square root of 1 third, which is cool. That's 2 thirds plus 1 third. That's just uh, one hour exactly. So yes, it takes us a minimum amount of time if we run 3.4226 miles down the shore first, then hop in the water and swim. I'm going to zoom out so we can see this whole thing. Okay, good job, that was another long one.